Welcome to the design workshop, the December design workshop. You know, as you can see here, and then on, um, you know, we've got Michi's screen there. She's got the fake Christmas tree. <clears throat> um, definitely not real, definitely not normal, but <laughs> um, before this, at the first part, for people watching the replay here, at the first part of the meeting, we do wins gratitudes and icebreaker. We talked about real tree versus fake tree at Christmas, and I'm alone in this group of having a real tree and enjoying a real tree. Um, so drop your feedback, <laughs> real tree or fake tree in the replay, maybe, um, or your questions about the workshop later. That's probably more important. Anyways, welcome to the December uh, Design Workshop. We're going to talk about leveling up um, your typography, specifically in sermon series graphics, but this can apply to kind of all all graphics you're going to make. But we're going to look at kind of a sermon series case study, use case maybe, uh, of just to see what kind of tips and tricks we can have at our disposal to make our titles and our graphics more engaging and communicate better, um, a bit more intriguing. You know, uh, instead of just you know typing the, picking a font, typing it, and moving on, we want to be a bit more intentional and deliberate with our type and our design. So, I am going to get my screen shared, but while I do that, and this kind of goes into our, we had an inspiration moment a few minutes ago, talking about um, when you envision in your mind what it's like but it's hard to get it there because you don't maybe have the tools or the skills or the knowledge to to do that so i was going to ask if if you guys have ever encountered a moment like that where you do a graphic sermon series graphic and you're like it's just not what i wanted it to be or you know it, you feel like it's lacking because i have <laughs> Only every single time. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, when do I not do that? Yeah. Um, all right. So this is where we're starting today. We're in Photoshop. And we're going to make a Christmas. Did you just thumbs down my design, Uriah? No, Photoshop. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, today we're going to make like a kind of Christmas sermon graphic. Um, so we've got the red and green. We've got the pine needles. And then we're going to kind of have this white title. Um, what should our sermon title be? I would like y'all's. This is collaborative. I want to hear a good sermon title, maybe like two, three, four words. Joy to the world. Sweet. I love it. All right. So easy peasy, easy peasy joy <clears throat> to the world. Oh no. All right. We're, so we're in a text box here um, right now in Photoshop. And if you use a text box, that. what? My thumbs down that. <laughs> Or rather, I think this is technically called an area type or paragraph text. Um, but more on that later. So if we just kind of, you know, if we do that if, in, in Photoshop, let's actually just T for type tool and just click. And now we have joy to the world in a text box instead of paragraph. And I'm command T, I'm going to resize it. Let's make it big. We could ship like this. Joy to the world. Boom. There we go. But how does this hit you guys? What? How does this feel when you see it? Boring. Like Basically. you just typed it. <laughs> to the point. <laughs> to the point. It just yeah. doesn't pop for me. It doesn't pop. Yeah, right. It's yeah, it's not Christmassy. Oh, it's not Christmassy. Ooh. What would make it Christmassy? Lens flare, some syrups <laughs> and gold <laughs> syrups. Yeah. So, um, I think you you're right on all those. I, real quick, I will put in a little 
plug here. Um, me, Mike, and Bria a little while ago did an Art Speak University on sermon series design and the whole process of that, the creative process from start to end for the most part. Um, getting inspiration and mood board and talking to you know your pastor or whoever, whoever the speaker communicator is and, and understanding their kind of inspiration and where they're going to take it and kind of gathering all those pieces and letting that help influence when you get to the artboard and when you get to the program and you're designing it out. For today, we're pretending like that most of that's happened um, and we're just in the design phase. So ideally, you know, we do have an idea of the tone. How do we want it to feel and all those kinds of things. And so here we're just in, in the, in the weeds and the nitty gritty and spending time. And really, again, today is just to look at type using type. So, um, yeah, so I think what you guys suggested, gold, serifs, whatever. The thing with Photoshop is, um, you can work with type. You can do lots of things with it, but it might not be quite as easy as illustrator. Um, and for today's purposes, because I want to look at illustrator and Photoshop and how we can use them together, we're going to hop over to illustrator and create our type there. And then we'll come back to Photoshop in a little while and kind of polish it off and make it fit kind of this background that we have as well. So hopping over to, to our blank canvas, our scary blank canvas. So this is one way to do it, but I'm just going to kind of go from this angle and how I might do it and some suggestions on kind of how we're going to use this, um, title in illustrator how we're going to design it out and explore so first off i would i think i still have it copied from there yeah boom all right so we i just did i'm not i'm not good at saying the step by step i did t for type tool and then i pasted it you know i copied it earlier right now we've got it copied over some of the settings so it's centered and left aligned so that's not exactly default but or center line. I'm going to left the line now. I'm going to change the color to black. Because at this stage of it, I don't want to be distracted by colors exactly. I just kind of want to get the right font, the right shape, the right layout, and and figure those bits out. And then we can talk about colors and textures and whatever. Um, so we've got Myriad as our starting default font. What I, what I would like, what I would suggest, what I like to do so I type out that title and then I'm just going to go into my list of fonts, you know, download from Google fonts or from Adobe fonts. And I'm going to start to find things that feel, and, and I'll just, so I'll, I'll click on it, hold alt and maybe shift. So it goes straight down, drag it down. And I'm going to go to the, Oh, there you go. That's kind of maybe, is that Christmassy? Vintage Christmas. Vintage Christmas. Victorian Christmas, yes. Victorian <laughs> Very good. Um, yes, quite. So something I would point out, this is all in all caps right now. And I think, yeah, so it, it copied it over um, maybe from Photoshop. But if you were to say you want um, this to be like title caps, you can go in. And you can say, oh, let me let me capitalize this W, and then I don't think we need those capitalized or whatever. Or you can Illustrator has, and I think Photoshop has this too. But you can do the change case. You can do title case. The thing is, you can get capitals on the T and on the minor words as well. So you know, just an option to keep in mind. Sometimes that's useful. But here, um, I'm just going to go in real quick. And we're going to capitalize these. And then if you want your type to be all caps, I would suggest to not type it out in all caps, um, which would be something like, you know, you go change case, you can do uppercase, kind of all these caps. Um, instead, I would use this all caps button in the character panel in Illustrator. Because if somewhere down the road, I decide, you know what? All caps isn't working. All I have to do is just come hit that. And now I'm back to kind of like default, like sentence or title case. Um, sometimes you'll get content from, you know, whoever to design with and all the headings are in all caps because that's kind of how they're imagining it. 
But if you're laying out long form stuff or whatever, that can kind of be a nightmare. If you down the road realize, you know what, I, you know, we need to have headings in title case or whatever. So just something to keep in mind. So I will go down and uh, I had, I had a font in mind for this that we'll probably end up using unless you guys riot and, and don't want to do it. And then I have a, second a quick there. hack for if, if you do get copy that isn't like typed out in all caps, there's an add on in Google Docs where you can <clears throat> make it all lowercase and then just capitalize what you need to. Mm -hmm. um, I frequently do that when I, I'll drop it into Google Docs, change it to all lowercase automatically and then adjust it as needed. That's so good. I found that found that much more helpful because then I avoid typos, you know, because yeah. if you try to retype it. So. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, retyping, you can start to introduce errors and differences and then down the road, you have problems. Um, yeah, for, so what I would do in the process is just as much as it takes, you know, just going down, let's find, let's find fonts that, that work, that feel right for the project that, you know, or maybe they're out of left field. Like, you know, I love this font decoy and I think that was on our last design workshop. Maybe that could work for this. Um, where to go? Alkaline is a fun, a fun one. So it kind of just depends on the tone, on the feel, the design, what you're going for, what you're going to pick. I kind of have a, an idea of of what I'm going to do already. So these fonts, the, these are uh, they only have capital letters, both of these, which I'm okay with for here. So. Technically, even though they are, you know, we're not doing all caps here, just the letters are going to be in all caps. So joy to the world. So if that's, let's see, I had over here, um, I'm going to, I'm going to eyedropper. Oops. What is going on? Okay. Eyedropper these. Because I spent a little bit of time prepping. Yeah. I cheated, maybe. So in the next part of the process, I would keep all of these fonts I explored just in case I'm like, I get down the road again and I'm like, you know what? Uh, I think I like the other one. And I'll just drag them off to the side. So they're not distracting, but they're there in case I want to jump back to them. And that hits on something else is try to, you know, it, when you're in school and they were like, in the math class were like, show your work, you know, and you had to show all your steps and um, it was really annoying and it took up lots of space and you're like, why do I have to do this? This is two plus two. I, I don't, I shouldn't have to show my work for two plus two. But um, if you got to a wrong answer, you could go back through your work and say, oh, this is where I went wrong. Or maybe I do, I do it this way instead here. This process is very similar. I'd say when you're designing, be as non-destructive as possible. And then also keep all your pieces as much as you can. If you're going to do something destructive, or even if you're not, if you're just kind of iterating, keep your pieces, copy it, move it over, leave that other stuff and keep moving along. But so you'll see, you know, I, let me do that here a little bit as we go. I just looked at world and I was like, is that spelled right? It's spelled right. Just so you know. Um, so I like these two fonts. And so what I think will do is we have joy and world here are kind of our main focus words right so something else you can do when you're designing for titles is think about a hierarchy or you know what's the main kind of what are the main words that we want to call out and then what are these other supporting words and so what i'm thinking here is to the could be in this secondary font so there's lots of ways you could go from here. You can copy, you know, you can kind of do start to do stuff like that. Um, and again, we want to try to be non-destructive if we can. So probably I'm going to copy this over here, uh, make it a bit bigger. And then I think for now, I want to try doing to the in this font that is less Christmassy. Um, I would say it's less Christmassy. I don't know. Maybe you guys wouldn't. And then I can start to just explore how do I want to maybe lay these out. And at some point, you're going to get to where you can't do a whole lot more customizing or editing until you 
changed the font into outlines. So different thoughts here, but if you want to re try to retain, you know, your editing with the text, you leave it as live text like this. But if you want to change it into shapes where you can move the letters a lot around a bit better, customize them a bit more, what you can do is just go to, you can right click on it and you do create outlines. And so now we don't have live text anymore. We just have shapes that happen to be letters. Um, and since this was all part of the same text box, they are all grouped. All you have to do is you can right click ungroup or command shift G. And now each letter is individual uh, on its own. You know, you can go and you can select a word altogether. Uh, I thought you could group from here. I always just do command G um, if I want to group. So select what you want, hit command G, and now that's all a group together. So where, where I'm at right now is um, now we have the different pieces. I'm going to group these. I might even group two the for now and keep them together. And I'll just spend some time figuring out how do I want to arrange these that's going to you know communicate well and look good on the canvas. You know, in this part of the process, you know, you might want to hop back. You know, if you already have your background, kind of think, you know, how's this going to fit in this space, but also in the other spaces. Uh, I don't really know. I don't know if I like this or not yet, but you know, I have my pieces. So if I wanted to change my mind on something, I could do that pretty easily. Something else here, let's, so I'm going to take these shapes, this outline text, put it over there. Something else is maybe I like it all in line, but it does feel a little too basic. It does feel almost typed out, They're like typed out, but but not, you know, because we've got two fonts and got two sizes going. Um, what you can start to do is experiment with, in the character panel, you got a few things at your disposal. You got size, and this is blank because I got two different sizes. Um, you have letting, you have kerning, and you have tracking. So letting is a space between lines, which we have one line here, so um, we're not seeing that. But if I go here, and I highlight everything. I change my letting. You can see it's the space between the lines. So that sounds like a a song. Space between the lines. Let's just make it all two hundred point, and that'll help us see. So if we do like one hundred and eighty points, we're gonna have a tighter letting. Um. You know what? I kind of, I kind of like. All right, I'm going to Command Z real quick. Let's stay here. Something else is you've got we've got kerning and we've got tracking. So kerning is really just referring to the space between individual letter pairs. So the space between the J and the O is kerning. The space between the O and the Y is kerning. Tracking is the overall width or space between um, all of the letters. And it's kind of how far apart are these going to be all together? How much width are they going to take up overall? With kerning, the space between the letters in Illustrator, you can have auto, you can have optical, you can have metrics. And how those are figured out is, you know, it's not exactly relevant except for auto is just based off of whoever made this font. It's what they set the spacing as. So that's, it doesn't mean auto in, in a way that Illustrator is looking at it and some sort of AI is determining, here's the spacing between the things that it needs to happen. Optical is that. <laughs> Illustrator is seeing the letter shapes and adjusting the spacing between them to visually be pleasing. The thing is, is that's not perfect. If you have a script font where the letters need to connect and you do optical, Illustrator is going to mess up the spacing where those um, letters connect more than likely. So it depends on the font that you use. 
what you should go with and what your specific use case is. For the most part, I like to go with optical because it does a little bit of the fixing of the spacing for me. And then I'll have to go in and maybe tweak some things like here it's put, do I have a space there? I didn't have a space between the E and the W. So, um, yeah, so that feels a little bit better now, um, than it did before. Another really powerful, um, tool in the character panel, uh, yep. is the baseline shift tool. <gasps> I was that about one. to go there next. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Deets is right. Deets should have done this, this shared this um, workshop, honestly. So baseline shift. Right now, I don't really like that to the is sitting on the same baseline. See this blue line here? That's the baseline. Sitting on the same baseline as the rest of the letters. Because it is smaller. These words are minor. And I want to kind of you know set them apart in some way. So baseline shift is a really good option. And that's going to be down here. Um, you can set a baseline shift of any letter you want to. And you can you can do negative, which is going to move it down. Or you can do positive, which it's going to go up. So for these letters, I am going to do a baseline shift. And there's a shortcut. You can do option shift and up and down on your, on your arrows. Um, and that's going to... Learn the shortcuts. <laughs> learn, learn the shortcuts whenever you can. Um, and I'm going to do, looks like pretty close to the middle, somewhere around there. That's 44. Kind of sit in the middle. That's kind of cool. I like that for now. That's a thing. Um, and yeah, this, so is, this is worthwhile because you've done what you did over earlier, but it's still editable type. Yes, thank, exactly. So earlier I couldn't have done this um, without, yeah, going to outlines and, and making these into shapes. And now I can't edit it. Um, so Dietz is right now. I still have editable text. So if I want to change this font, I can, or, or whatever, uh, or if I misspelled world, uh, I could still do that. Um, but it is starting to be more customized. So for where we're at here, I'm going to copy this. Let me just uh, see. Yeah. So I'm going to copy this and take this into Photoshop real quick. Oh, there's chat. This. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. I'm not keeping up with that chat there. So we're going to go back to Photoshop. And we're going to get rid of this trash. And we're going to paste in here. And Photoshop's going to be like, whoa, hold on. How do you want to put this new thing in here that's from somewhere else? Um, you can do layers, which that's, um, not what we want to do. I won't spend time on that. Cause that's kind of a distraction. You can do smart objects. You could do pixels path or shape layer without getting too deep into what, what each of these are, um, pixels is rasterized. So your type will come in, it will be pixels. It won't be editable in the way that we like. The path will be helpful. Um, it'll be made up of vectors and all that. Shape layer would be even more helpful, but smart object um, is kind of the ideal situation here because we took we made this in Illustrator and we have live text that we want to be able to edit if possible. If we paste it into here as a path or as a shape layer, as pixels, we can no longer edit it. But if we do a smart object, Photoshop will retain that as a as a separate thing in the layers that we can double click. And it's going to know that we even made it in Illustrator. And it's going to bring us back into Illustrator. And we can fix our misspelled world, even though that's not, that's, it's now misspelled. Um, I've actually recently discovered that you can copy paste text into Photoshop. Yeah. The text tool. That's yeah, weird. you can. So if I'm in here and I copy this, um, and then I paste we'll the text, the and you do layer. Oh no, I mean like with with the text tool, like you can use the type tool. It won't do the layer. Thing. Oh, and do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So if I just have that and paste, it's going to retain all those yeah. settings like it did earlier when I took it from Photoshop to Illustrator. 
I think that's really handy. That might be a fairly new addition. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it didn't used to do that for sure. Um, so now we we have world misspelled, but um, we're gonna go back. We'll fix that. And then to update this in Photoshop, you just save. So you're in a separate file here that Photoshop created, took you back to Illustrator. All I have to do is oops, save. It saved that, and now it will automatically update over here. Um, there's, there's pros and cons to doing things like this. Um, right now, I can't easily change the color unless I do something if I go into the layer style menu and I do like a color overlay, I can do it that way. Um, but the font color itself is not actually changed. That's just Photoshop masking a color over that layer. I come back over here and I change it to red because Christmas. Save it, come back in here. It will update that color. So that's nice. Um, but we can go uh, another layer deeper here. And I'm going to hide this smart object. So earlier I did some pre-work and I made a smart object that's in Photoshop. Um, the way that you can do that is you can really just take anything, any layer, right click and do convert to smart object. Now this is a separate thing on its own file. You know, to, you can do your own thing You can save it and update it. And it's going to do that. Oops. Don't. Don't close, don't close the whole file. We just want to delete that. Um, so I did this earlier and I put some effects on it. We're going to go deep into these different smart object layers. I'm skipping a lot of stuff, but You're going to do as a smart object. This is red, very red. All right. So again, smart objects, even in, in here, we save it. We're going to follow this line up. So something that we're doing here now is I have a editable text in a smart object. And then on this layer of the smart object, I have a few effects that I want to do to make this more Christmassy, make it more in line with the overall series graphic. And we could spend time talking about these effects and do like a little tutorial, um, but that's not what we're here for today. So we just edit these to make it look good. Go a little bit more. So right here we have a blur. We have a filter gallery. It's um, called spatter. And then a threshold. That's just kind of, it is it is making it black, um, but we'll address that soon. And that's just kind of giving us, you can see how it changes things there. It's making our type feel just not straight out typed. It's giving it some customization, some some extra little bits. Something else we want to do. Um, well, we'll get there in just a second. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to go in here. Oh, suddenly it's white. Oops. And again, it's like I said earlier, um, we're not actually changing the color of the text. We're doing a color overlay. And we can turn that off and we'll see it is like it was on the last the last smart object there. So oh I deleted my so I'm just resizing command T resizing that. So what we can do now, let's go back. Oh wait, I need to stick with me here. Stick with me team. Open this. It's a new smart object. Say we got this in for review and they said, we don't like joy to the world. It's not, it's not what pastor is talking about or it's not whatever. And they gave me a new title 
What would the new title be? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. So this is where we've built up to this point. We've kept it editable. We're saving our sanity. We're making sure that we can do this easily. So now the Friday before Christmas, they say we want to oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel instead of joy to the world. What we can do is we can just say, you know, yeah, I think, okay, we can work this. I think maybe what would be better this font is nice what was this font grins grin grinsy got gotish let's see grin can't see it cuz of zoom um, grinsy gotish that how you say that all right and then emmanuel and then, oh, do we, do we got to do the little apostrophe there? Oh, come, oh, come. I think it's just O by itself. I don't think it's it just O. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to use all of our little tricks that we talked about earlier. And we're going to edit this. Like I'm going to do, um, get this close and then here. Yeah. Um, it's something else, your eyes skipped over this, but this is good. Something else you can do too, when you're working with text is to show hidden characters. So that's going to help you know, all right, what's going on here? How can I, like, we can see this space right here is the old, that's the old font. We're going to make it this font. Hidden characters can really help save your sanity. I'm like, why is it doing this? Or why is this here? Um, this is a paragraph, new, uh, new line or paragraph return. You can do a soft return. That's going to look different, you know, so hidden characters can actually really help you know what's going on with your type. You look, I'm going to do some spaces. I'm going to bring our letting a little bit more. I'm not hundred percent on this file or the, any of this, but we're just, we're going to move along for sake of time here. I'm going to mess with the, see, you see over here, I'm messing with the tracking. And then I can see, you know what, this, this right here, I need to adjust the kerning a little bit there. I'm going to adjust this kerning out. I'm just kind of trying to get this all spaced nicely where it feels good visually real quick. All right. I made those changes. I just got the email to change that 20 minutes ago. Now I spend a little bit of time. I save this, go back into Photoshop, and we're gonna we're gonna follow this. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. We're gonna follow this smart up smart object all the way up. Something else I can do too is change the size of this. I don't need it that tall. That's goodish. I'm gonna save this and go up to the next one. Oh look, it's updated! Woo! -hoo! I'm gonna save this. And actually, I'm going to make this smaller too. This is still the, this is set to the artboard size above, um, maybe. I wish, there's probably an easier way to do this. And I'm just crazy, but I wish I could see how that's going to, oh, got it. That's pretty close. All right, we'll save that. It's going to make that bigger. And now my customized type that fits the vibe of the overall graphic um easily changed you know you would want to spend some time and tweak the different little effects that you've done maybe and you can do even more effects from here you can spend some more time customizing it and even if you really wanted to you know at this point you can be a little bit destructive and what i would do here if i wanted to take things even further i might copy this smart object with the title um i can't even i can't even remember how to get something i know the shortcut command j <laughs> copy that layer and then you can you know you can rasterize the whole thing and then even the style and now i have this as just pixels and you know maybe i want to i don't know what would i do i i could erase part of it or whatever um i could play with some things I can explore a bit more with it push it further but I still have this um 
this version of it that was not destroyed that I can go back to. Um, but there's plenty of ways to 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 not be destructive with your with your type, um, with your pieces in Photoshop and in Illustrator as well. So I'd say avoid that as much as you can. Um, there was a lot here. There's a lot I didn't get to. Or I skipped over. What do you guys think? Comments, more pointers. Give us, drop us the deets here. If you, if you have anything, Alex, but, um, yeah. There's more you could do there, uh, depending on like the type of client or the the type, uh, the personality of your leader, because if you're, if you're watching this and you're a church creative, you know, you, your church is your client. So you, so you probably know their vibe. Like I know we work with some churches that are like, this would not be enough. This would be too plain for them. So they would want some more embellishments. Whereas we work with some that this would be just enough. Like the, the, they would be happy with this. So hmm. uh, I would say the next step in this is just lean more into what the personality of your church or your brand is uh, to try to fit that along and try to uh, along with what we've made here. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, to that can... point, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say to that point, I think, you know, this is like a, a really solid middle ground mm -hmm. where you could go more minimal, like a lot more minimal, like just the type with some minor texture in the background, yeah. or you, you know, go all the way to like book cover, you know, and just have the bright shining, you know, and then have it like, like the type was carved out of diamonds i don't know i've never i i can't do that mike is the expert on the, that kind of stuff yeah. so <laughs> yeah there's all all kinds of directions you can go and things you can do um yeah and you know in the in the kind of stepping away from just working with type you know you can start to add yeah add in extra textures and extra little graphics the thing to keep in mind too, though, for this kind of stuff is, you know, yeah, this will look good on the main screen that's up there, maybe on the left and right, or that's this 16 by nine ratio, but you know, they're gonna, you're gonna need to share about it on social or um, have it at the top of the bulletin printout or whatever. Uh, you want to be sure that the pieces you have can be reworked and resized and moved around to fit these different applications. You got to be careful about locking yourself into it's only going to look good if it's in this 16 by nine ratio. So um, that's something to keep in mind as well. And that's another reason why you want to work as non-destructive as possible and try to keep type even editable. So say if, you know, if we're going to have a very vertical orientation here, maybe I could go back to my, you know, if we're going to change it to a nine by 16 graphic, I could come back if I wanted to. To here and make this two lines um and that can start me on the road down to it's not updated yet because i haven't gone into the smart objects and saved them and followed that in, inception back up to the surface but um so now i could do that i could start to resize or rearrange things as needed it's still the same look it's still the same title it's still the same pieces but we're customizing it to fit the different applications too. So, yeah, all kinds of things you could do. I was also thinking, you know, like we could take we're right at time here, but you know, you could take a, uh, a Bible verse and that's relevant to the title or to the content and you can drop that in, a, you know, as kind of a background or something that's in there that can be editable text. So if you, if you pick a Bible verse, and the communicator's like, hey, we're actually in Matthew. We're not in Luke. Can you do a Matthew verse? They're like, got it. Let me do that. You paste. You got live text. You put it in. And it's easy. You save yourself a lot of headache <laughs> and heartache. But all right. Well, there you go. This was the December design workshop. Do you guys have any other thoughts or anything else before we wrap it up? Mike does. Not really. I was just going to say this was solid. I didn't yeah. want to be the first one to speak up. This was solid. <laughs> okay. Good to hear that. No, really, really good. Jared, thank you. Yeah. We aspire yeah. to be you one day. So. No, that's a don't. No, that's, <laughs> that's a fool's. 
<laughs> journey there. <laughs> I just want to know what Bria thinks. She's like hiding behind her. No, she put in chat. She just... put she put delicious with crispy okay. bacon. Oh. Next to it. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> did not see that. Yeah, I did not pay attention to the chat. Cool. Well, thanks, guys. And we'll see you in January for a design workshop. I oh, actually, before we wrap, I just want to say if you're watching this replay, um, and you have questions or comments or ideas or anything else you want to add to this, go ahead and drop it in the chat there or hop over to the Artspeak community Slack and probably in the design channel, um, where you know we can talk about this more. Um, or if you get into here and you're having questions, trying to figure some stuff out, happy to always talk and and and, um, and work out what we can do, what, what we can make happen. So, do you have a teaser for January's workshop, Jared? Um, it's not decided yet. I actually haven't followed up with um, the two people. I have two things in mind, um, so I don't have a teaser for it yet. I apologize. I'll get maybe next time. I'll have a teaser for the next time. Yeah. Sweet. Merry Christmas, fam. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Jared.